Hello everyone, welcome to everything cars and more. Today I am going to review the new Skoda Fabia. Let's go. So, the engine range starts as follows. You can get a 1 litre unit either with 64 or 79 bhp. Next up is a 1 litre turbo unit that can have either 94 or 108 bhp. Finally, you can have a 1.5 litre turbo with 148 bhp. The gearbox options are either a 6 speed manual or a 7 speed twin clutch automatic gearbox. The pricing will start from around £13,500 but this has not been confirmed. So, the design at the front is very striking and sporty looking. The looks are mostly borrowed from the new Skoda Octavia and the Skoda Superb. Up front we have LED headlights which look smart. The grille also has a new shape, but it is not as sharp as the Octavia grille which is a shame because I think it could have made the car look sporty. Lower down below the sporty creases in the bumper we have a lower air vent that is inspired by the Skoda Superb and Octavia and like those bigger cars the fog lights join onto the grille. One other thing that is rare to find on any car nowadays is that this car has headlight washers. Along the side we can clearly see that this is based on the Polo. The rear window on the rear door slopes up exactly the same on the Polo. We do have some sharp creases going from the headlight all the way to the taillights and the lower crease represents the Czech Republic flag and I think that is a nice touch as it shows the car's originality. At the back the Skoda Fabia looks like the old Fabia but modernized significantly. The old Fabia at the back did always look smart so they have tried to keep a similar design. The Skoda Fabia has taken inspiration from the Enyaq IV. We can see this in the rear tail lights and the Skoda lettering. The overall design of the Skoda Fabia at the back is simple but good looking. So, the interior design is taken from the Skoda Kamek which is the SUV version of the Fabia. There are some changes though from the Kamek interior. To start with there is a panel that goes along the dashboard which makes the car look wider. Also, the air vents are round. One different part is that the instrument cluster has the Fabia name on it that is etched in the black plastic and to me that looks cheap and tacky and I really don't like that design. One other thing that I don't like is that we have a previous generation infotainment system and not the new one from the Octavia. This would have been better and would have made the interior look more modern. The thing that I do like though is the new steering wheel and the floating door handle as well as the fully digital instrument cluster. It is better than what you would find on the Vauxhall Corsa. So, sitting in the back there is a surprising amount of headroom in here and there is enough headroom for 6 foot people. Again, this is better than a Corsa. Also, you get some nice door pockets in the back as well as air vents, two USB Type-C ports and an armrest. Things that you would find in a more expensive car. The boot space of the Skoda Fabia is 380 liters with the seats up and with the seats down it is 1190 liters. Now the Vauxhall Corsa has a 309 liter boot size, but the best part is the Volkswagen Golf 8 boot size is 381 liters. That's only 1 liter bigger and the Golf is a bigger car. So, the Skoda Fabia. This is a very very good car to be a Skoda. The styling is on point and the interior is very good and beats its rivals in my opinion. Also the space in the back and the boot space is as good as the bigger cars. It just makes me wonder why the bigger cars don't have more room as the Fabia is polo sized but the interior space is golf sized. It is exactly like a TARDIS. If you liked this video, then please do not forget to comment like and subscribe. Thank you.